So we had another attack in Brussels, a Paris-style attack. Now, you know, it wasn't as bad, not as large of a scale, not as many people died, but it was the same type of attack, a coordinated, simultaneous attack. 26 people dead is what they're saying right now. That number could go up, we don't know, and the attacks may or may not be over. They seem to think that they were coordinated and timed and that they're done now. But who knows? It's sad, man. It keeps happening over there. And why does it keep happening over there? Why does it happen more there than it does here? I mean, we've had San Bernardino. That's really the only major attack we've had since, what, Fort Hood? And then before then, it was 9-11. And they're not as coordinated. I mean, you're talking two people in uh, San Bernardino. One in Fort Hood. But the Paris attacks, the Brussels attacks, you're talking 10, 15 people. I mean, one reason it happens is because <laughs> they don't let their people defend themselves. Granted, it is harder to defend yourself against a bomb. But they've allowed the Islamists in, and they, they look past it. They welcome them. I think a lot of the people are starting to see through that and starting to become appropriately paranoid. But uh, it's happening a little too late. But why doesn't it happen here? I mean, we are target number one, make no mistake. If they could get away with it here, they certainly would be doing it here. But it's harder for them to get away with it here. Why is that? Well, because our government's done a pretty good job of keeping us safe. But you know what? They did so... They did so by restricting our freedoms. The NSA, Homeland Security, the spying, the Patriot Act, the NDAA, everything... We gave up freedom for security, for a little bit of safety, and, and it worked. <laughs> there have been less attacks here, but is it worth it? Is it worth it in the end? Certainly not to me. Certainly not to me. And I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people, hardcore Republicans, pro-gunners, they would disagree. They'd say, no, it was worth it. The NSA spying program worked. Homeland Security worked. The Patriot Act worked. It kept us safe. I don't want to give up freedom for security. But what do you do? I mean, you can't argue with the results. It has kept us at least moderately safer. You know, for me, the answer is pretty simple. And maybe it's not the right answer. I don't know. But you get people who care about our freedoms and our liberties and the Constitution. And you, you make them your senators and your congressmen and your president. And they do away with the NDAA. And, and they do away with Homeland Security and the NSA spying programs. And they expand our ability to fully appreciate and enjoy our Second Amendment rights. They stop restricting the things that allow us to keep ourselves safe and those around us. We can be our own Homeland Security if we just had the right people in place. I'm willing to give up some safety and security for freedom. That's what our country is founded on. I'm willing to take responsibility for my life, my family's lives, and, and those around me. If I ever find myself in that situation, I'm willing to take that responsibility on. And I hope everybody out there is willing to take that responsibility on in exchange for more freedom. To me, it's pretty simple. It's pretty damn simple. Do not give up. More freedom for more security. Simply don't do it, especially during times like this, because these attacks are the things that our government uses to scare us into accepting more restrictions on our rights. And whatever you do, do not let them get away with it.